Today's topic might seem a bit out of left field, but if you've watched my videos for a bit, you'll know that this game has cropped up a few times, whether it's my newly adopted online avatar or the music I play in videos. And today, I'm going to walk you through my journey with this timeless classic. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. This month's Quasar Commander, Corbinisms, thank you very much, has given me carte blanche to do basically whatever kind of video I want. I initially thought about workshopping some video ideas I'd been kicking around in the back of my head. Uh, the politics of Yu-Gi-Oh! is something I want to work on every time someone complains about that in the comments, but that requires a lot more research than I currently have time to do. The idea of doing some kind of audio drama about the Six Samurai came up, but to realize it the way I want it to would take a lot more assets than I would have the time or money to put together. Even the idea of talking about how storylines in Yu-Gi-Oh! keep using the themes of death and rebirth over and over again come up, but once again, I'm a little out of my depth on that. A concept that's been a part of so many cultures and religions probably deserves a bit more effort than I can give at this point in time. But something I've wanted to do for well over a decade is talk about another one of my lifelong passions, video games. I ate, breathed, and sleep those darn things growing up, but none have had quite as much of an impact on me as The Legend of Dragoon. Now, I'm hardly the first person on the internet to reminisce about this gem, but that hasn't stopped me from keeping a smoldering ember of that desire alive. And with the help of my patrons, my vocal supporters, and all of you watching this, I can now stoke that ember into a roaring flame. Let's talk about The Legend of Dragoon and how it made me the person I am today. The first memory I have of this game wasn't actually the game proper. At one point, I owned a demo disc, but where it is now, I couldn't say. Or even how I got it. My research shows that it was probably packaged with a PlayStation magazine, but I don't really remember playing any of the other games featured on the disc. I think maybe Metal Gear Solid? It would explain why I didn't touch the series until Snake Eater came out, because I remember being very, very frustrated with it. But. I didn't need any other games. I don't remember how the demo boots up, but I do remember how it starts. Grassy Plains, the party of Dart, Shauna, and Levitz making their daring escape from Helena Prison. There's this scripted event where an arrow pins Levitz to the ground and wounds him, and I swear I spent so many attempts just trying to avoid that arrow, because as a tiny Nova, how was I supposed to know that games could just do that? Oh, and already I'm reliving the character designs. Dart, the man with the sword, proudly donning my favorite color, yelling out attack names with such vigor. Double slash. Volcano. Burning rush. Never failed to hype me up. The other two look nice, but as you've probably noticed, I have a clear favor. Already, this game was binding itself to my spirit, hitting every trope I had loved at the time. Powerful warriors with swords, the promise of dragons, eventually getting to the point where you transformed into a dragon warrior, and Dart explaining his tragic backstory, his village burning at the hands of a terrible monster, and his subdued but persistent drive for revenge, well, I was hooked. There was also some roadblocks in there. Uh, it was a timed demo, so if you didn't move fast enough, you'd just get booted out to the demo menu, and that was it. There's this puzzle that requires you to make a bridge to cross a river, so you have to find a tree to knock over, which I did, and visited several times to knock over, but thinking to check the pre-rendered image of the cabin for an axe didn't really cross my mind for weeks. I instead persisted on fighting weird mantis, mole, and kiwi creatures, and I never seemed to tire of it, practicing the attack timings so I could even land Levitz's very strange combos with consistency. And that was another thing I couldn't get enough of the additions. I know now that games like the Mario RPGs were using timed button presses to enhance their turn-based experience, but at the time, the closest thing I'd ever played to Mario was 64. Pokemon was fun, sure, but attacking and being rewarded for knowing your combos? That was a thrill. True, you're just pressing a button in a determined rhythm, but that's stripping away all the context, the set dressing. 
Pressing the button isn't just pressing the button, it's moving through your stances, landing blows at critical times. You're just as much a fighter as the people on screen. You are the hero. And so, when wild investigations finally bore fruit, and I'd picked up the axe at a brief fake-out making me think my discovery was all for naught, the pathway to the end of the demo appeared, and actually made my way all the way to the end, fighting a giant worm creature that has no bearing on the rest of the game. Some media has giant space fleas from nowhere, I have giant cave worms. Takes all kinds, I suppose. It's at this point, several minutes into the video, that I ought to explain what it is I'm talking about and what you're looking at. The Legend of Dragoon came out in the States in the middle of the year 2000, and was developed in-house by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Everything starts out simple enough. Dart, after traveling the countryside, is about to return to his home village, only to find that it's been ransacked and destroyed by this game's evil empire, Sandora. And what's worse, they've kidnapped Dart's childhood friend, Shauna, who's been taken to the empire's foremost prison facility, Helena, for reasons unknown. And so, putting his current plans to hunt down the black monster on hold, Dart rushes to Shauna's aid, aiming to stage the most daring prison escape the country had ever heard of. Along the way, Dart picks up a new companion in Levitz, a soldier captured by Sandora who has pledged themselves to the good kingdom of this game, Basil, and after rescuing Shauna, we're caught up with the demo. From there, our merry little band becomes a formidable commando squad against the forces of Sandora, discover and awaken the power to rule dragons, uncover a plot that set this war between nations in motion to begin with, and start to unravel schemes that will have dire consequences on the entire continent of Endenus. And the details for those, I'll leave for all of you to discover. I'll keep spoilers here to a minimum, and please, none in the comments below. I know this is a 20-year-old game, but I would much rather newcomers experience it fresh, especially since it's not a particularly simple game to get a hold of. Second-hand copies of the game can be found somewhere around $20 to $60, and digital copies can only be found on the PS3 storefront, as well as PSP and Vita, though it is significantly cheaper there, if I recall correctly. If you have some other way of obtaining it, well, I'm certainly not going to tell you not to use those methods, as long as you don't tell me about them. But without getting into spoilers, what is it that I love about this game that I want to share with others? Is it the story? Well, yes. It's fairly simple, there are some plot twists, but none that I would say are going to shake you to the core. Those are left for the emotional plot beats, with exciting highs and devastating lows. And if you can muscle through the difficult localization, you'll find a cast of characters that's easy to fall in love with, as well as a number of villains you'll love to hate. What about the combat system? Definitely the combat system. Each character, except for the bow users because there's no respect for rangers in this game apparently, have their own unique set of additions for you to learn and master. As you successfully complete additions, they level up, dealing more damage and earning you more spirit points, which are the fuel you use for your Dragoon transformations, which are incredibly cool. Like additions, each character has their own unique list of spells in that form. And while these Dragoon modes only have one edition apiece, and sadly the input is the exact same for each one, the designers took full advantage of the fact that their previously ground-restricted combatants can now fly, swinging the camera around as they perform a series of acrobatic attacks, having them fly every which way, ending in a huge explosion if you can time it all perfectly. But there are some issues. There's no healing magic outside of very specific dragoons, so you have to rely on guarding and items to be your cleric, and you have a criminally limited inventory. You can also only cast spells in dragoon form, or with the help of consumable items, so it looks like Paper Mario ended up learning from dragoon at some point to pay things back. But those take up valuable spaces in your inventory that healing items could take, and anytime you use an item, that's a turn you could be spent perfecting your additions... There are some frustrations, but nothing I would say that derails the experience. But if you're someone who likes to utilize every mechanic in the game to its fullest, you're gonna run into some brick walls. The art design is also an incredible treat, and while I could go on about the characters and the enemies, the thing I want to focus on most is the dragon designs. While there are a few that hold to the standard giant winged lizard template, we've also got our giant mantis, an eel, and a 
tank for crying out loud. The creativity on display here is turned up to maximum right from the beginning, and I could not be more delighted by it. It defies expectations, and while you might mistake Fair Brand for a weird Xenomorph variant exclusive to an old PS1 game, they're an undeniably oppressive presence, both in cutscenes and combat. How about the voice acting? No! God no! Bless them for trying, but the performances and audio mixing in these are terrible. The opening one is, thankfully, the least atrocious. I'd almost go so far as to call it good. But for the rest, uh, see if you can get some popcorn and some friends together, because you're in for some premium riffing material. But that's all pretty universal. I don't think I've shared anything you can't find on a number of wonderful retrospectives out there, each one a desperate plea for someone at Sony to greenlight a remake or even a remaster. What is it about The Legend of Dragoon that stuck with me, specifically, all these decades? Well, part of it is likely a huge wellspring of nostalgia. We can't help but love the things that brought us joy when growing up. Some of my praises are likely overblown, especially compared to the offerings available nowadays. But to step away from the cynicism for a bit, it all comes back to Dart. He's certainly no blank slate the player can project themselves onto, but that doesn't keep him from being relatable. I mean, my family wasn't slaughtered by a demon or anything, but... A lot of the story is about Dart learning to let go of the anger that drives him. Uh, anger can be a powerful motivator, but a lot of people struggle to channel that anger constructively, yours truly included. Anger can become a very painful mirror. You see what you hate reflected in everything around you. Growing up, I felt a very big persecution complex. As a self-identified nerd in a world of media that pointed and laughed at those who liked video games, I saw jocks and popular kids as my enemies. When asked by others if there was anything I liked, I chose to clam up. Better to let them think I was boring than to let them know I liked Pokemon. Really, it's their own fault, though, if they could be trusted to know, I wouldn't have to be so cautious. And as school life continued, that anger began to fester. I judged people all around me in contrast to my own interests. My usual dismissal of jocks and preps began to seep into hobbies that really should have been a connective point with others. The football players in my class like Madden? Well, I mean, that's not a real game, it's just a digital version of football. Of course, they'd like it, they're meatheads. And all those military shooters they love talking about? Games for idiots. If they knew better, they'd pick up a real game that made you think, like an RPG. Yu-Gi-Oh! is fun, I love the anime. But those kids over there play Magic the Gathering, so we're sworn enemies. Do these kids who like video games play Final Fantasy? Sheep. All of them. Playing an overrated game when they could be enjoying a real classic. Like, for instance, Legend of the Dragoon. This was, of course, a very misguided mindset. While sports games have never really clicked with me, they're still a game that people enjoy. And games like Halo and even Modern Warfare became instant favorites of mine. Magic the Gathering is a unique game with a lot to like, and Final Fantasy is popular for a reason. And when I eventually let those walls down, stopped judging others because I was angry they didn't automatically know and accept me, I made a lot more friends. Now, true, I didn't have this driving motive behind myself that I used my anger to pursue, but dark stories about learning to not be defined by your hate. I'm sure I was made fun of by other kids and maybe even a few adults for my interests, but learning to stop giving those phantoms power over me was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I learned more about a lot of other things that I never would have thought to enjoy beforehand. I learned to listen, which might not sound like a big superpower, but you'd be surprised. And that's not everything I took from Dart. Some people will call the basically instant bromance of Dart and Levitz to be very unrealistic. And sure, I've yet to meet someone I immediately had a did we just become best friends moment with, but it's a wonderful alternative to treating your male friends like competition, or with indifference. I'd much rather share big smiles and tell tall tales and give and receive encouragement than stoically glower in each other's machismo. And Dart struggles with vulnerability. He wrestles with his feelings towards Shauna. Is it wrong for him to pursue that romantic relationship? Is it wrong for him to think of a friend as anything more? Does he even have the right to think such things after leaving her alone for so many years while pursuing his vengeance? Especially since he might just 
leave to go continue that? Will he have to give up the thing that's defined him all these years for love? I don't feel like this game delves particularly deep into these questions, mind, but sometimes it's enough to see the big strong hero not have all the answers to these questions, struggling with how their past feelings intermingle with a maturing mindset. For someone going through high school, there are a lot of points where that became a familiar problem. Legend of the Dragoon is a classic, at least for me. Will it be a classic for you? Maybe. I certainly think it has a good shot. If you can find a way to play it however way works best for you, this is a plea to go play this game. Overshadowed by the march of time, but never forgotten. Who knows? Maybe you'll end up making some precious memories of your own along the way. Once again, a big thank you to this month's Quasar Commander Corbinisms for giving me the chance to stray from the beaten path to try something fresh. I'd also like to thank the rest of my patrons, including Nebula Navigators Adam Zagdell, Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, John Manji, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Shooting Star 3300, Sun Sorrow, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Bear Shark to Puss Studios, Serb, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Cozy Boat 275, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you want to see your name in the credits, as well as see my videos earlier than anyone else, please consider checking the link to my Patreon down below, as anything you can contribute would mean the world to me, and helps me keep this as my full-time job. I don't have any other non-Yu-Gi-Oh topics like this lined up in the future, but hey, with enough support, you never know, right? In fact, if you played Legend of the Dragoon, uh, let me know what your favorite parts were in the comments. One of my favorite things when putting those musics into videos is hearing people recognize it and just like, it's really cool hearing other people who love this game that really means a lot to me. And if you haven't played it, is there anything that you saw in the video that you're interested in discovering on your own? And sincerely, thank you all so much for watching and listening to me gush about a game that I've grown up with all my life. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.